Well, welcome to Texas GOP Vote today. We're talking with the Commissioner of the Texas Railroad Commissioner, Barry Smitherman. Thank you for coming to Texas GOP Vote today. Thank you, Bob. Glad to be here. And I uh, also want to make sure everyone knows that you're one of the candidates for replacing Greg Abbott as the Attorney General of the State of Texas. That's right. I am running for Attorney General. Now that General Abbott is running for Governor, mm -hmm. that office is open and I'm running for it. Well, I think that that's very exciting. First, what I'd like to touch on with you is Let's talk a little bit about the Texas Railroad Commission. A lot of people are under a misimpression of what that is all about. It has very little to do with trains, but uh, a lot to do with what's making Texas a successful economy right now. So tell us what you've done as the Commissioner of the Railroad Commission. Well, Bob, you're absolutely correct. The name is misleading. We have nothing to do with railroads. We have in the past, but now we regulate the Texas oil and gas pipeline and lignite coal mining industries. And because of our role in issuing permits, in inspecting wells, issuing permits for pipeline, inspecting that, and mining, uh, we are helping to create this incredible economy that we have here in Texas, where about 500,000, a half a million Texans are working in the mining, oil and gas industry, and those are great paying jobs. And it's really driving the economy that we have here in Texas. It really is. Uh it's a fascinating thing to drive down through South Texas right now and you find a little bitty roadside motel that would normally be 45 or $50 a night and it, you're lucky if you can get a room and if you can it's going to be 150 to $200 a night. So it, it's been great for our economy down there. I understand it used to take a long time to get permits and the process of getting through the system was very difficult and, and that's changed now. How have you been involved in fixing that process? When I came to the Railroad Commission two years ago, I was really frustrated by how long it took to get a permit through the process. It was taking up to five months to get an oil and gas drilling permit, up to five years to get a permit to mine coal. Yeah, that's just too long. It's ridiculous. When we're standing in the way of industry's ability to access oil and gas or to mine for coal, we're stopping job creation and wealth creation. So we made that a priority. We now have gotten that down to five days on the oil and gas permitting side. And we took the mining permitting from five years to less than a year. My goal is to get it down to six months. And that's by putting the right people in the right seats empowering them to do their job, giving them better technology, and making it a priority. And the autom automation process through that, I think, has really come involved in, in cutting that time period. I guess you run into some obstacles from the federal government from time to time, and I know uh, the current Attorney General spends a lot of time in court with the, with the federal government. What has the Texas Railroad Commission been doing in that? Presently, the state of Texas has 18 live lawsuits against the federal government. Seven of them involve the Railroad Commission or the energy industry. So I'm a co-litigant with General Abbott on seven of these cases. Mm -hmm. And primarily it's because this federal government wants to try to stop the oil and gas industry through regulations that are not grounded in science but are driven by a political agenda. So we've sued. And when we get in front of a competent court, we almost always win. We've had some real successes, and we've been able to delay the implementation of some of these boneheaded regulations mm -hmm. that would have stopped the oil and gas industry or the mining industry really in their tracks, and with that, stop the job creation and our ability to be energy independent in America. So nobody likes to sue, mm -hmm. but at this point in our history, it is one of the last recourses we have to stop the Obama administration from shutting down the fossil fuel industry. It's actually even difficult to get them to follow court orders as we've seen when the um, Supreme Court declared their offshore drilling moratorium illegal, unconstitutional. They basically just backdoored away around it and came back at it and did it again by increasing the regulations and the time it takes to get permits. This, this administration is so consumed by their belief in climate change that that drives all of their policy. So because they have as a singular objective reducing CO2 emissions, they don't really care what happens with job losses. Mm -hmm. They're so focused on any activity that emits carbon, which fossil fuel industry does. It's carbon-based industry. Right. What they don't realize is they're killing the American economy by doing that. Mm -hmm. it, it's been 
almost like a war has been declared on Texas, but any of the oil producing states are going through that as well. The role of the Attorney General of Texas is a critical role for protecting this economy here. Uh, General Abbott has done an outstanding job in, in that respect and uh, it's made a, a path that's going to be difficult for anybody else to follow. Why do you want to leave the Railroad Commission now and become the Attorney General of Texas? Well, General Abbott has done a great job and they are big shoes to fill, but what we need in this job is a fighter mm -hmm. and a fighter who understands that the oil and gas industry is a critical pillar of our economy. So we have to prosecute all these cases against the EPA and the Department of Interior. Not only the air quality regulations that we've seen, but also efforts like putting a lizard on the endangered species list, mm -hmm. a lizard that lives in the Permian Basin where most of our oil and gas production comes from. So you've got to fight that. I've been in that arena already fighting those battles. In addition to that, you need an attorney general with trial experience. Mm -hmm. I was in the the Harris County District Attorney's Office before I began my, my government service. And you need someone who knows how to lead agencies. As the chairman of the Railroad Commission, which is a 700 person agency, mm -hmm. the former chairman of the Public Utility Commission, I am prepared to lead the Attorney General's Office, which is a 4,000 person agency. Mm -hmm. That kind of leadership is critical. Now, obviously, the AG's office isn't just about oil and gas. There's a lot of other issues out there that are very important. Um, border security is a critical problem in Texas, and uh, the governor has provided a lot of assets to the, uh, the local sheriffs and to the DPS down there, but they're not always able to prosecute a lot of things that, that come up down there. As the Attorney General, what would you do to help our border sheriffs and the local district attorneys down there? Bob, this will be a priority of my office, is to provide our resources to border DAs and border sheriffs. The Attorney General's office does not have primary jurisdiction for prosecuting crimes, but we can be brought in to assist a local DA, or we can take over a case if we're so requested. What I want to do is get with the border sheriffs and the border DAs and tell them this is a priority for our office. We want to help you prosecute crime. And I mean all crime. Mm -hmm. Think of it as uh, what New York City did with the broken windows prosecution. I don't care if you're jaywalking, if you're trespassing, if you're littering, much less DWI, assault, any crime we need to prosecute. Because if we can't deport illegal aliens, we can certainly put the ones that are breaking the law mm -hmm. in jail and send a clear message. If you're coming to America, you have to obey the law. One of the big problems the ranchers have down there is getting people to enforce trespassing laws. Right. And it sounds like this would be a good way to help with that. Basically, the drug cartels or the human smuggling that's going on down there comes right across their land. Used to, they were respectful at least when they would come across the land, but now it's gotten to where they'll tear out fences, cattle get released out onto the roads, they damage the water tanks. Uh, you know, there's a lot of vandalism that goes on as well. And these are all state crimes. They are. And, and should be prosecuted. So we should create a unit which would special, uh, specialize in assisting local DAs to prosecute these crimes. You described it perfectly. What happens is someone comes and they cut a fence or they tear down a fence, they go through a pasture, mm -hmm. they stop and have a camp, they litter, they leave all of their remains, uh, then they may break the water well mm -hmm. or otherwise damage the property maybe break into a shed, steal some, steal some equipment. Mm -hmm. Those are all state crimes. They all need to be prosecuted. We don't need to create any law. The law is already there. Right. We just need to put the people to work on those cases, putting people in jail. Human trafficking is another issue that's very bad in Texas. Houston is probably the nation's biggest city in terms of human trafficking. And it's not just in the sex industry, but it's in the construction industry and the restaurant and hospitality industries as well. What can the Attorney General's office do to um, strengthen prosecutions on, on human trafficking cases? Well, it's a terrible crime. I mean, anyone, anytime somebody is forced to do something against their will, uh, that is not only morally wrong, but it's against our laws. And so we need to focus in on that as well. It can't be tolerated. Trafficking of humans, whether it's sex trade or otherwise, uh, is a despicable crime. 
it often involves uh, underage people or, or people that are the most vulnerable in our society. So we can't let that go. Okay. And we've had a lot of problems here with the local FBI office actually turning away cases. And so if we could get more resources from the, the state's AG office, I think that would be a, a huge help. What other aspects of the Attorney General's office would you like to, to talk about that are priority for you in, in moving forward into this new position should you get elected? Well, defending a couple of things uh, that are high priority to me will be very important. One is the Supreme Court's recent decision on Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. Forever, Texas has had to pre-clear our lines anytime we redraw our Congressional Senate or House District lines, and the Supreme Court recently said, we don't have to do that anymore. We are not the same state that we were 50 years ago. That's incredibly important. And yet Eric Holder has said he will basically ignore that holding mm -hmm. and put the resources of the Department of Justice to making sure that we are continuing to do what the Supreme Court says we don't have to do anymore. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, we're going to have to push back on that significantly. The Democrats love the Supreme Court when it rules in their favor, like on Obamacare, right. but when a ruling comes in our favor, they discredit it. The other thing I'm really worried about is Second Amendment. This administration has had an assault on what they call assault rifles, which are just automatic weapons, uh, as well as your ability to carry uh, the laws that we have in our state which allow for gun shows to be held in county property. Mm -hmm. uh, the attacks have decreased slightly, but I'm convinced they're going to come back. With every renewed effort, they try to get more and more control over our Second Amendment or right to bear arms. The Second Amendment is the foundation of all of our amendments, and it protects us not just against foreign invaders, but it is designed to be the last line of defense against a tyrannical government. In respect to the, uh, the Second Amendment, the United Nations passed the UN Arms Control Treaty, Small Arms Treaty, uh, here recently. The United States has yet to sign that treaty or submit it to Congress for ratification. But General Abbott had pledged that if that happened, if President Obama signed the treaty and the Senate somehow passed it, which I don't think it would pass in the Senate, that he would file a lawsuit against the federal government for basically allowing a treaty to usurp the, uh, the Second Amendment Constitution. Would you commit to doing that as well? Absolutely. I, I'm a CHL holder myself. Mm -hmm. I have great respect for the Second Amendment. Uh, it is not a right given to us by government as much as it's a right given to us by our Creator to defend ourselves. The framers of the Constitution were inspired, I'm convinced, by God in writing the Bill of Rights. And so it is not up to a foreign government to tell us what we can or cannot do. The Second Amendment is the foundation of our rights, and it can't be taken away by treaty. And unfortunately, at this day and time, it's not just the Second Amendment that's under attack by the federal government. The First Amendment, the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, and, and certainly the Tenth Amendment has been literally destroyed by this government. So it's going to take an attorney general that's willing to stand up, that has that fire in the belly. And I've heard you talk about this in other meetings and stuff, and I've seen that fire. So I'm, uh, I'm glad to say that uh, I think if Barry Smitherman was the attorney general, we would have that. Absolutely, Bob. I grew up on the east side of Houston. You come out of there as a fighter by nature, worked my way through Texas A&M, the University of Texas School of Law and have gotten knocked down a couple of times in my career and have always gotten back up and got back in the fight. The fact that I've sued Obama and his administration seven times already, I'm willing to take that prosecution forward. I'm a skilled lawyer having spent time in the Harris County DA's office and what I want to create is a Texas that will be a place of prosperity and freedom regardless of what happens to the rest of the United States. And that way we know that in Texas you can come here. We may be the last best hope for freedom on earth, but we have to maintain this for our children and grandchildren. Well, Commissioner, thank you very much for taking the time thank to come you. and talk to Texas GOP Vote. I hope as the campaign progresses we can get some more opportunity to drill down into some issues and, and talk about some specifics. I would love to do it. Thanks for what you do okay. and thanks for being here. Thank you.